Welcome to this selfie stick tour of the NJIT Makerspace. Welcome. This is our prototyping and fabrication facility on campus. This is supposed to function just like your library for you, your gym. It's something that everyone can use that goes to NJIT when you need to make something. So sometimes in class, you might have a professor say, hey, I want you to design this 3D model, and then I want you to come to the makerspace and I want you to 3D print it, right? So uh, this is the facility where you would do that. And not only are you doing uh, school projects here and working with club teams, et cetera, but people are also coming in here and working on personal projects as well. So if you wanna come in here and 3D print Baby Yoda, you can absolutely come in here and 3D print Baby Yoda to your heart's content. So I'm gonna take you guys on a tour of this space. Uh, you guys can ask questions in the chat. Uh, I have an assistant here, yeah, Baby Yoda. I have an assistant here who's gonna help me with that. Actually, that's Emma right there. All right, Emma's gonna help me out with questions. Uh, so yeah, feel free to ask any questions and uh, we're gonna get started. So first, this first area here, this is our CNC machining area. What is CNC machining? I'm so glad you asked. Uh, this is where we are cutting parts uh, out of metal. So you can actually see, there's a CNC lathe here that we have, and there's some raw material loaded into these jaws right here. And there's some cutting tools that are up there on that. We call that a turret. And what happens is, you start this machine up, and this machine will actually cut whatever design you create uh, with a specialized code. And then you will get that metal part out of the machine. In fact, really quickly, let's take a look at how that process works. So you could see right here, this is the part designed in 3D space. I can look, it around, I can look around it here. Yeah. So we designed this actually for uh, another facility on campus. They needed some help. They needed help developing a tripod mount for some cameras. So we made this part in 3D, and then we said, okay, we gotta make this out of aluminum. So what does that mean? We have to make a cutting code, a code that's gonna run on these machines and actually machine that part out of raw material. So then we load that raw material in, we load that program onto this controller right here, and then th all these cutting tools come into place and actually machine that part. You can kind of see it right there. Do you guys, oh, you just see my eyebrows. Uh, there's that part right there that we designed, the exact same part that we had on our computer. So that's what CNC machining is. We're cutting metals, we're cutting some hard plastics, and we do that, we start with a 3D model, and then we upload that to the machine, and then we're cutting. So that's pretty cool. We have all that here. We have club teams that use that. We, in fact, have a Baja team on campus. They make a four, they make a four wheeled off-road vehicle from scratch. They design the whole thing, and then they come into the makerspace and they build it. They machine parts, they laser cut things, they water jet cut some things. In fact, here is our CNC water jet. This guy right here behind me is cutting metals with a high pressure water stream. In fact, it's cutting them at 40, uh, sorry, 50,000 pounds per square inch. 50,000 pounds per square inch. Your garden hose at home, does anyone wanna guess what kind of PSI that is, how many pounds per square inch? What do you think that number is for your garden hose? <laughs> you can type it in the chat. 100, it's even lower than that. It's more like 40, 40 PSI. And this guy here, 50,000 PSI. Do you guys wanna see this cut something? Yes. All right, there's my metal material. There's the cutting head, actually. You can see it just there, and there's my metal material loaded there. So we're gonna shoot water very fast, a very high PSI, and we're gonna cut that metal. Let's do it. First things first, though, what's important when you're machining stuff, guys? Safety first. Safety first. All right, it's gonna get loud. Oh, that's a dry run. Oh, no. 
let's stop that real quick. Very importantly, we need to turn dry run off. That might be important. Dry run is off. Let's try one more time. All right. Ooh, no dice. All right, guys, we're gonna have to come back to this, all right? All right, cool. We're gonna come back. Sorry for that letdown right there. Uh, we'll come right back to that, all right, guys? We're gonna keep moving on this tour. Don't worry, I'll come back at the end. We'll get it to work. All right, so let's show you our tool chest back here. All right, so. All of our tools are in these chests right here. And what's cool about the system is when you want to grab a tool, you take out your NJIT ID, there's my face on it, and uh, you can tap that ID right here on this card reader. All right, and what does that do for you? It opens this drawer up for you with all these beautiful tools, all these beautiful brand new tools. So when I want a tool, I'll take it out of the drawer and I'll close it. And if you look at the screen back there, it knows I took out this tool. So I just checked out this tool like I would check out a book at the library. So now all the tools are in my name. And when I'm done with the tool, I can just put it back right here. And then that's it. I close the drawer. It knows I returned the tool and that's it. So it's checked back in. All right. I'm going to show you one of our favorite stations here. Uh, this is our CO2 laser cutter right here, we're actually laser cutting something as we speak. So this guy is laser cutting. It's using a high powered, high heat laser to melt that material away. So right now we're cutting out. Well, I'll let you see that in a second. But we have many club teams and students who are cutting things out of woods, cardboard, paper, plastic. We can even cut and engrave food in here believe it or not. In fact, we've engraved some pumpkins uh, just recently. Uh, they actually have my face on them, unfortunately. All right, we're cutting. Boom. In reverse, but still what you want. So that's our laser cutter. Uh, in fact, you can do some pretty crazy things with this. You can laser cut a whole entire assembly. So something like these gears. And if you look closely, uh, those will actually spin around there. So these are all kinds of projects that you can work with all the machines in here. So basically, if you have any ideas for a project, you come into this space and you say, hey, I want to do this. You learn about all the machines that we have in here. And then you can say, okay, what machine uh, do I need to do my task? And then you walk up to that machine and you use it. Of course, there's training involved and we'll help you get training. Uh, and speaking of training, I'm gonna take you into a room that probably requires the most training. This is our manual machining room. So you guys remember those computer controlled machines in the front? Here we have the manually operated versions of those metal cutting machines. So I'm gonna really quickly, hopefully this one works this time. All right. So this is a lathe right here. I'm gonna show you a very, very, very quick lathe operation. You see my metal material loaded in that chuck right there. You see my cutting tool right here. And I'm gonna come in and try to machine that real fast. Let's see what happens. Oh, problems again. Problem after problem today. Gotta to take the e-brake off, am I right guys? Super important. Let's spin that material up. Woo! Let's do it. You guys can see that. We're cutting metal material right now. It's all being turned into chips. 
And this is all part of a machining operation. That's real metal being cut, guys. All right. Then when I'm done, I stop that. I pull this out. I turn that guy off, hit the brake, and there's my machine metal. You guys all see that, right? So that's what you're doing when you're machining metal. And we have a bunch of different machines that allow you to do that in here. All right, if you have questions, of course, send them to the chat. Man, you guys are really hyped, huh? Amazing everything. Let's go take a look at our 3D scanner. We're gonna actually scan some 3D parts. That's gonna be cool. So this is our metrology room. We call it our metrology room. We've got Adam on the ones and twos here. So we're scanning a part. We wanted to scan something because we want to reverse engineer it. The part in this case happens to be a digital camera. So there's our digital camera. And we put that on this turntable here. And there's a camera there. And basically what we're doing is we're just basically recording this shape. So we're creating a 3D model of this shape. And what that looks like, Adam, you want to pull it up? Oh, we'll show you on the screen here. Oh, we got to start the scan first. So real quick, actually, let's look at what's happening. We've got some light hitting the part. You can kind of see it there. There's some lights hitting that part. And then that table's going to rotate. And what happens on the screen here, you start to see that model in 3D. So let's look at another pass, maybe one more. We'll see what happens. It's a tricky process. Sometimes there's a lot of guess and check. Like for right now, it's not really getting all of the camera. Oh, there's a little bit more. So yeah, we'd have to work on this scan a little bit, but you can take a, a part that's already exists in space, convert it into a 3D model, and then you have something you can work with, maybe something you can 3D print. So Adam, if you want to pull up the uh, Cura. So we'll show you what that looks like when you figure that all out. There's our 3D model. Look at that. So there's that scan of that uh, camera. So there it is. Cool, right? So you can edit there. Question? They're asking if you, can, you are going to recreate that. Oh, yes. That model, yes. You got ahead of me. I'll show you in one second, right after I show you guys uh, 3D printing. In fact, I'm going to shout at my friend here so we can get the water jet going. Uh, it did not like whatever I did. I hit go and it said uh, it started running without water. So then I turned on all the uh, computer control of the water and then it asked me to set a new home. So. Okay, if it's ready for me to hit play, then I'll come back to it at the end. Uh, give me one, you wanna, wanna test run it when I get there? I'll come back to you, then we'll both run it? Yeah, let's do that. All right, guys, 3D printing. We're going to get the water jet to work, so get pumped about that. Uh, so 3D printing. We have a ton of 3D printers here. Some of you guys may even know what this technology is. Do you guys have that at home? Does anyone have that at their school? <laughs> you guys are memeing now. Okay, what is 3D printing? We are taking solid plastic, and we're pushing it out of a heated nozzle there and we're laying it down layer by layer. And we're putting that plastic down to form a solid part. Some of you guys were asking if I'm gonna do anything with that 3D model of that camera. I'm so glad you asked. There it is. Whew. There's, so there's that 3D model. So that's one of the things you hear, that was fast. Actually, how many hours do you guys think this print took? How many hours? Could I make it bigger? Totally. One hour. Longer than that. This probably took about, how long did it take? It took two hours to print this, believe it or not, which is actually a really fast 3D print. Most 3D prints take a lot longer. In fact, we've done some 24-hour prints here. That kind of thing happens all the time. So that's 3D printing. This is another technology you guys can use to make stuff in here. Prototype things. Build models like Baby Yoda, like I talked about. Let's go to our 3D print lab really fast and we're going to wrap this tour up. Oh, I forgot. We're going to show you the water jet before we take off. 
So this is our 3D print lab where everyone's decided to hide. <laughs> uh, we just got a brand new printer right behind me. This guy prints with powder. So there's plastic powder sitting in this machine and a laser comes down and it melts that powder layer by layer to make a 3D part. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and you can put a ton of parts in here. And I'll show you one more printer that we have. I'll try to avoid the crew hiding in here. Uh, but these are our SLA liquid resin printers. You have a part for me, Yash? Yes, I do. You want to find a... Ah, okay. So this is what it looks like when you prepare a part for that kind of printer. We're printing with liquid resins. So you're using a laser light, basically. You're using a laser light to cure that liquid resin. And you're going to do that on this machine. So a tank of liquid resin goes right here. And your build plate's up there. Your build plate's going to dip down into that resin. And then the laser's going to shine on the build plate layer by layer and solidify your part. So if you want to see what that looks like, these parts actually look like this. They're pretty clean. They look great. There's some really fine details in there you can barely see with this camera, but it's all gravy. All right. Guys, let's go, let's go look at the water jet and wrap this up. If you guys have any questions for me, now is a great time. Yeah. How is it so detailed? How is it so detailed? Well, I can focus that laser to a very, very small point, which means that I can get very, very good accuracy on the parts that I print on that laser. Do I control it as it moves? No, that's a great question. So. I got that question. So uh, most of these machines, if not all of them, run on a computer code. So what that means is when you have an idea, usually you need to make that idea into a 3D format or a 2D format. And then you have that and you say, all right, now I need to make it. So you take it to another software and you tell that machine, this is what I want to cut or this is what I want to make. And you figure out, Basically, you create a code for that machine for it to run. So all these machines in here, uh, I hate to say this, but they're dumb. Uh, they only listen to what you tell them to do. So if you write a code that tells them to destroy the machine, the machine will destroy itself. So you have to be very careful as you create the codes for these programs. But basically, that's what we do in here. We create codes for all these machines to interpret and run, and then they create the part with that code. So for example, we're back to the water jet. We made this part right here. You can barely see it, of course, because it's too bright. But it says NJIT in there. Just, just trust me on this one. It says NJIT. We upload that 2D drawing, and then we have to create the path for the water jet for it to actually cut it. So now, hopefully, this kicks off. I'm going to start this pump up. I just got soaked. I'm in the splash zone. Yes, 
Any material, yes. That's it. Let's take a look. You guys see that in there? So that was carved out of, uh, that was aluminum. That was cut out of aluminum. But someone asked, can we cut any material? Pretty much. We can cut any material, even steel. And I'll show you a close up of that cut. This is what that looks like in that machine. So this is what we just cut. But yeah, we cut that out of aluminum right there. So yeah, all it takes is a design in here. As long as you make the design, you can come in here and you can make it. So guys, that's the NJIT Makerspace in a nutshell. I don't know if you guys have any questions for me, but now's probably a good time to ask. So this is our Makerspace. Anything good in there? Why is there a guy with a camera? Oh, we're filming this. <laughs> we're gonna use all this footage for more tours, more promotional stuff. Maybe we wanna reuse the footage. So yeah, other questions for me. So yeah, guys, if you guys are interested in engineering, I highly recommend NJIT. I highly recommend this school, of course, because of this makerspace. There's really no limit to what you can do in here. Yeah, go ahead. So one of the questions, we got a couple now. So why would you use the powder 3D printer as opposed to the usual 3D printer? Great. So why use the powder printer as opposed to another one? Each 3D printer has different production times associated with it. Uh, each 3D printer has different mechanical properties and different materials that they can uh, work with. So that's how we select 3D printers in here. What do we need the print to do? Does it have to be a specific material? How big is the print going to be? All those things play a part in you deciding what machine to use. Is the water in the water jet cold or hot? Oh, the water in the water jet. The water in the water jet's probably very hot as it comes out of the uh, nozzle, but inside the tank, it's whatever room temperature is. Why do we put googly eyes on the machine? Why do we put googly eyes on the machine? Uh, because we like to have fun here. And this stuff gets boring after a while, so you gotta put googly eyes on things to keep it interesting. Any other questions? I wish, oh, I wish we could stay too. That, but to be honest with you, that's really the end of my tour. Uh, that's our NJIT makerspace. Where's the water go? It actually sits in that tank. Uh, there's a little bit, there's a drain at the back just to make sure it the water doesn't get too high. And then it goes into a drain uh, uh, into the wastewater here. Uh, but yeah, pretty much the water sits there in that tank. Any other questions for me? Any question? You can ask, you can ask me about anything. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Yeah. The water was cold when it did splash me, uh, but luckily I didn't get my hair too wet. Any other questions, guys? Did you make a thing? Yeah, we made this. And we make a lot of things in here. We made this basically, but smaller. I just can't take it out right now because it's clamped down. Everything you work on in there has to be clamped down. All right. I could take a shower in there if I wanted to, if the material is in there. That would probably be a bad idea. Maybe we could spray you with the hose in there though if you hopped in. There is a hose over here. Does the water stay there? Actually, believe it or not, um, at the, during the summer we drain that tank and we have to scoop out all the junk that's in this tank at the end of every year. And we get buckets and we put on waders and we hop in there. It's really not that fun. Someone's back. I saw a question, maybe. Okay, so did you make the water thing? And the no, we bought this machine. This machine was three hundred thousand dollars. What's that? Did the water cut the image? Oh, the water cut that outline of NJIT logo. The NJIT logo. Is that the image you're talking about? Any other questions for me? Yeah. That's, the, that's what we cut out of there, yep. Other questions for me? You still got me here. Yeah, 
Yeah, hey, you can scroll through the chat. I got kicked off the call. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, ask those questions to me one more time. One person said, what was the coolest thing we made in here? Uh, so you guys saw that 3D scanner, right? Uh, we have 3D scanned our faces and we have 3D printed our own faces. The, the water from here just comes out of your normal hose. So it takes a couple hours to fill this tank up, but we just fill it from a regular hose, a regular uh, water line. Cool. What kind of careers can you go into? Pretty much any career that makes something. So any career that involves engineering in any way, shape, or form, this makerspace is going to help you make parts for that career. So um, we have a lot of mechanical engineers in here uh, working on little mechanical components. We have biomedical engineers in here as well. Uh, they do stuff that has to do with uh, engineering of the body, so how your body moves, implants, stuff like that there and here all the time 3d printing uh, this machine behind me the water jet was purchased by the civil engineering department civil engineers typically deal with construction type of tasks like bridges etc uh, but they're interested in what fracking does to the environment and they were cutting pieces of stone on here so you can cut stone on here uh, i'm not the owner i'm actually the manager of this facility and i saw someone before ask me if it's fun to work there yes it's really fun working here I'm a mechanical engineering student, or I got my bachelor's here at NGIT, and then they asked if I would like to come and manage this facility, or rather I applied, and I was given the job, and I love it here. I get to do all the things that I learned about in class. I get to practically apply them. So yeah, I love it. Anytime I want to 3D print something, or I need to make a gift for my family, like around Christmas, I got to make some gifts. I come to the makerspace and I make personalized gifts for all my friends and family, and they love that stuff. Great. The makerspace was made uh, about, I want to say construction started probably about three or four years ago. Uh, and then I started working here about a little bit longer than two years ago. So uh, yeah, this is like a multi-million dollar facility. It took many years to plan it and get all these machines in here and uh, figure out how the space was going to run. And uh, we're up and running now. Uh, we're doing pretty good. A lot of people are using the space so much so that we actually built an addition to our space outside. It's called phase two. And uh, that means there's even more tools for you guys to use to make things. What kind of things have you guys been not done? Oh, what haven't we done in here? That's a good question. One thing we really want to do in here is welding. Do you guys know what welding is? You're basically joining two metal materials by uh, melting material between them. So you can join two pieces of metal. We don't have welding in here yet, but we really want to get that. So uh, that'll probably be the next exciting thing we get in here. So we're looking forward to that. Any other questions for me? I'm looking at Emma, by the way. How long were you a manager? About two years. About two or, two or a half, two and a half years probably. Sometime around then. I love it here. Uh, this is a great job. It feels like I'm not working a lot of the time. So it's pretty sweet. Other questions for me? Do you think work sites such as construction, or as I said, will have a 3D printer on site instead of the future, instead of, instead of having to order from a different company? Mm. Uh, people have asked that a lot. Um, it's possible. Now, the issue with it is that you need engineers to run those 3D printers. Because, like I said, someone has to design that part. And then you need an engineer to make sure that it prints correctly. And then and only then will you get something that works from that machine that you could potentially use to replace a damaged part somewhere else. I forgot to mention to you guys that we have a metal 3D printer here as well. So we can print 3D parts with metal. Right now we print with stainless steel. So we can print on metal in here too, which is really cool. What's the biggest, biggest thing we've made here? Biggest thing we made? We made a foam head, so a large head uh, I want to say that was like yay big, probably as tall as me. We made a head that's just made out of foam and then we did that so we could broadcast an image onto the head and that was all for a presentation. That came out pretty cool. I wish I had it here, I would show you. 
How will 3D printing be used in space? That's a great question. Uh, if something gets damaged up in outer space, uh, how do they get a replacement part? It could take months for them to plan a new uh, trip up there. There could be other complications. So if you have manufacturing equipment that's very easy to use and it comes in a small package, you could theoretically print things that, you need to be, that need to be replaced. So you put the manufacturing facility up in space, if that makes sense. So what was the smallest thing that we have in here? Small, oh, you guys are nuts. Smallest things that we have, uh, let's see. I've printed some parts that are only a couple millimeters big. Uh, we did some medical components. We printed some things up for a syringe. So everything had to be really, really, really small. Is it hard to work on the controls? No, it's actually really easy and you guys could actually start doing this at home right now. If you download a program called Cura, C-U-R-A, Cura, it's free to download. You can actually start to play with 3D models and uh, uh, pretend you're gonna build them. You need the actual printer to build them, but you can prepare, you can prepare them uh, on that software. Organs may be 3D printed, it's possible. They're always trying to work on a bio printer. Uh, it's very difficult to 3D print biological tissue. So it'll probably take a long time, but I think NJIT actually has a bio printer on campus. I don't think it prints organs though. Be cool if it did. Other questions for me? Oh, okay. All righty, guys. Can we go there? Unfortunately, right now, because your group is so big, it's probably not a good idea with COVID for you guys all to come to the space. Uh, but soon, once everything passes, hopefully, fingers crossed, you guys can come to the space one day and check it out, see it firsthand. Um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe even come for a workshop. You guys can build something. The latest thing we printed was that camera I showed you. I don't have it on me anymore, but. Yeah, that silver camera that I showed you guys before, we just printed that today so we can show you guys how everything in here works. Oh, where is the makerspace? The makerspace is in the GITC building on NJIT campus, which is in Newark, New Jersey. What's the coolest thing there? Uh, what's the coolest thing? Probably our metal 3D printer that you guys can get to see. Uh, that's kind of behind closed doors, but it does print with metal and it's pretty sweet. The metal starts out as a powder and then a laser melts the powder. It melts the metal one layer at a time and that's how the parts are made. We do make prototypes. That's what we are, a rapid prototyping facility. Uh, so we make a bunch of prototypes. What's the best gift I've ever printed? Uh, so I mentioned Baby Yoda before. I 3D printed Baby Yoda for my sister recently. It was her birthday and I, she was really happy with that. Uh, I've also laser cut some cheese boards. You guys probably don't know what that is yet, but you will soon, trust me. Uh, I've laser engraved some custom messages on cheese boards for people, and people loved it. So you could do that too. If I don't like math, can I still print? Yes, if you don't like math, you could still use this facility. You don't have to be a part of any major. You don't have to be related to engineering. You don't really need to have too many special skills. You can still do a 3D print. Trust me, we'll teach you how to do it. That's what we're here for. All right, guys. I feel like that's all the questions. I think you guys have exhausted yourselves here. Is it hard? No, it's not that hard, I promise. You make anything you, oh. Can you make anything to work with the 3D printer? You can make almost anything work with the 3D printer. That's the, that's the beauty of a 3D printer, as long as it fits inside the printer. Oh, I want to say 6,000 square feet. I don't know if that means anything to you guys. Big, uh, maybe like a football field. Maybe a little smaller. I saw some other questions. What are they spamming? Oh, weird. Yes, we make, uh, we've, people have made remote control cars in here. People have made remote control drones in here. We actually get a lot of people 3D printing and doing the electrical work on drones in this facility. So if you're into drones, this would be a good place to make them. We actually do have drone classes 
that come in here and they 3D print components. Anyone important? We had the governor of New Jersey here once. So M Governor Murphy was here. Can you make metal? Uh, we usually buy the metal and then we machine it. Are there women that work in the field? Absolutely. Uh, half of our staff is female and there's absolutely women in uh, all the careers that I mentioned. What's the first thing I made? I'll get back to that one. First thing I made in here, I probably 3D printed something. Uh, I know that I metal 3D printed a bunch of rook chess pieces for a project here at the school because our icon is a rook. So I printed a bunch of those and that took a long time. Uh, we haven't worked with a defense contractor yet, but they do have a relationship with NJIT. So occasionally uh, they do contract some of their work out to people at NJIT and we do help them out. Ooh, hot air blown sounds like a bunch of sewing and we have sewing machines. It also sounds like basket weaving. I don't have any basket weaving technology here yet. Uh, and then you'd have to make a component that pushed hot air uh, up into that balloon. And uh, yeah, you probably could make that here with metal. Yes. Who's the youngest worker here? Youngest worker here. Ooh, uh, I want to say they're probably a sophomore. Probably have a sophomore on staff, if I'm not mistaken. Can you make realistic things? Yeah, totally. Yes, hard to answer that question, but yeah, you can totally make realistic things in here. Can you make fossils? No, you can't make fossils. However, uh, that's a good question. Someone did come in here recently with fossilized bone, and they wanted to cut the fossilized bone, so we talked to them about that. We really do have all kinds of crazy projects coming in here. Ooh, which project took the longest? I would say our club teams. Uh, we have two club teams on campus. Uh, or we have three. We have Baja, they make an off-road car. We have the aero team, they make an airplane that's remote controlled. And then we have a solar car team that makes a solar powered car. So all of their projects take all year to make. And then they go and compete. Did I make a dinosaur? Nope, can't make a dinosaur. I can 3D print a model of one. NGIT likely does. I don't know about that information off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's something going on here where you can come in and... Uh... There's also a lot of high school. Programs. Yes, I know there's a lot of high school programs at NGIT. Anything else? Can you make a car? Yep, you can make a car on the Baja team or you can come in and 3D print a small car model. That works too. Uh, who is the youngest person here? I think they're all the same age. What year are you, uh, Sam? Oh, junior. Oh, yeah, you're a senior? Okay. Sam back there is a junior. Oh, I'm sorry, a junior, right? Yeah, Sam back there is a junior. That, she might be our youngest person here. What year is Adam? What year is Adam? Okay. All right, so you saw her, that was Sam. Sam is our youngest student here right now. Can you make a four-wheeler? It would probably take a long time, but I'm sure you could. Oh, that's a good question. We have 3D printed um, prosthetic hands here that work. Uh, and we did that as part of a donation program. We actually donated them to some countries that needed them. Uh, so yeah, we 3D printed some working hands. Uh, obviously they don't look like my hand, but close. And we sent those out to people who needed them. We do make statues, we've made statues here, absolutely. Can I make you? Yes, remember I told you you could 3D print your face here, and I've done that. Uh, that'd be a lot of electrical wiring and complicated stuff that I don't know about, but I'm sure you could. How long did it take to print the hand? I wanna say it probably took about 12 plus hours for each hand. Probably more like, yeah, 12, 15. All right, guys, if you guys for some reason have Instagram, which I know is possible now, uh, you can follow us at NJIT Makerspace. That's our handle. So you can follow us and see all the cool stuff that we've uh, worked on in here. So check that out. Bet. Uh, also, check out our website, njitmakerspace.com. 
You can go on there, you can look at all the equipment we have. You can look at some photos of the staff if you feel like it. Uh, you could also check out, um, let's see, the training programs we have, and you can contact us. Can you make an air conditioner? Everyone that's asking me, can I make? The answer is pretty much yes. No matter what it is, as long as it's feasible, yes, you can make it. What's that? When is this finish? Are you calling me it? Oh. Alrighty, yeah. When do we finish? This is pretty much it, guys. Make a light bulb, that's a tough one. These are some weird questions, guys. Thank you, Justin. Hey. My pleasure, everyone. Alright. Hopefully I'll see you guys here at NGIT someday soon. Oh, I think they asked me when is the place finished because you said they're putting on an Oh, the place is finished. We have both places made. So when you come here, uh, you will see both spaces ready to be used by you and you can come in. All right, guys, thanks for coming. I really appreciate you guys all joining me. Uh, a light bulb be tough. That would involve glass blowing, but we don't have glass blowing right now. All right, everyone. If you have more questions, you can email me, makerspace at ngit.edu.